Welcome to the CEO Insider Podcast, powered by Y Texas. My name is Sandy McElroy. In this episode, we'll talk to the CEO of SAS Shoes, Nancy Richardson. Nancy has been the CEO of SAS Shoes since March of 2012. She has an MBA and law degree from the University of Texas at Austin. Nancy will share with us how over 40 years ago, two unemployed shoemakers started SAS Shoes. We'll also get her thoughts on brick and mortar retail, the company's strategy regarding online retail, and what the saying, she wants what she wants when she wants it, is all about. Enjoy this episode of the CEO Insider Podcast with the Chief Executive Officer of SAS Shoes, Nancy Richardson. Nancy, I am so excited to talk to you, and I think the story that I'm about to tell you uh, is going to make you happy. I recently was at... Uh, a deal with a group of my wife's friends are school teachers. And I was kind of eavesdropping on the conversation and guess what they started talking about? SAS shoes. They did. And you know how when one person recommends something and the other one knows about it, how excited they get? The Great. One of her girlfriends was talking um, about comfortable shoes that she wears because she's a school teacher on her feet all day. And they were talking about one of your shoes called the Roamer. Yes, very familiar with the Roamer. It's been a wickedly popular shoe. Well, let me tell you, these ladies just lit up talking about your shoes. And I, you, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm about to talk to the CEO of, of, of SAS Shoes. So the question is, have you worn a pair of our shoes? I have. I have. I have, okay. a, pair, I have a pair of your penny loafers, actually. Love them. Oh, very good. That's I, a nice shoe. It is. And then, anyway, to wrap that story up, they also went in to talk. Uh, they continued to talk. One of them brought up another pair of your shoes. Uh, Sunny is what they're called. Oh, yes. Yes. And the other one went right to her phone, went to her website, and ordered a pair. Well, excellent. That's what I like to hear. I'm sure you do. Let's talk uh, about SAS Shoes. And I don't know that a lot of people know what it stands for. San Antonio Shoe. We are made right here in San Antonio and have a second factory in Del Rio, Texas. You guys have been doing this for a long time. Since 1976. So that's about 43 years at this point. And why San Antonio? So it's actually a funny little story. Our founders both were grew up in Maine, both worked in the shoe industry there. One had gone outside the U.S. and worked a couple of years, but they both came to San Antonio to work for a previous shoe company here named Bimby. Mm -hmm. One of our founders got fired from Bimby, and the other one quit because they wouldn't hire the other one back. So they found themselves in San Antonio in the wintertime and thought, so do we want to go back to cold Maine, or do we want to try to figure this out in San Antonio? So San Antonio it was. How did you end up in San Antonio? So I grew up in Kansas, but came to Austin to go to St. Edwards. Mm -hmm. And after I graduated from St. Edwards, I was recruited to the what's now the EY office here in San Antonio. And I know that you are from Atchison, Kansas. That's correct. My, my best friend in the entire world is from Atchison, Kansas. And you may know the family. You may know. Do you know the Perslow family? Of course, I know the Perslow family. You know Sluggo and it, yes, and yes. There's a whole group. Of there's them. a there's a bunch of Perslows. Well, Brock is my best friend. Oh, it, what a small world it is! It isn't. So you ended up. You didn't. You decided not to go to Benedictine. You got decided to come down south and get to Austin and go to St. Ed's. That's true. I have two siblings that went to Benedictine and two that went to KU. The what? The climate here is a little bit better. It's a little bit better. I don't know that I could move back where there's a long winter. Well, let's talk more uh, about you guys recently really had a big rock to push and won a contract with the government. And that involved changing a law, correct? Yes, the law had been changed already. It's called the Berry Amendment. And the Berry Amendment re requires the military to buy wholly U.S. sourced goods. They had actually received an exemption from Congress for a number of years in the in buying shoes. And about, I guess it's about two years ago now, Congress said they would not give the military another exemption from the Berry Amendment for their footwear. So there was a bid put out for military training shoes. I think the expectation across 
the industry was that New Balance would receive 100% of those shoes. But we decided that we wanted to create a shoe and bid on it, and we were fortunate enough that we won the largest and first contract for the recruits, the training shoes. Um, A company named Proper won the second contract, which is slightly smaller than ours, and then New Balance did win the third contract, which is the smallest of the three. Now, just to be clear on this, this is this is something where the people that won the bid were going to be U.S. based companies. The huge elephant here is Nike. They were not; they couldn't be in this, right? That's correct. So many people aren't aware Nike actually doesn't own any factories. They contract their shoes out to other people. And I believe, I could be incorrect, but I believe 100% of their shoes are made outside the U.S. These shoes are 100% U.S. sourced. So every thread, every eyelet, every piece of material Every person who works on that shoe is U.S. based. John Ratzenberger used to do a show, How Things Are Made, and I loved it. Of course, that was Cliff Clavin on Cheers, and I would I would love watching that show, How Things Are Made. I would love to see how shoes get made. That's got to be an amazing process. So we actually do three tours a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So oh. we have three public tours down here at our factory in San Antonio. And how many people do you employ there, just at the San Antonio? plant. And we employ around 600 people in San Antonio. So you're making a lot of shoes in the average day. We make a couple of pair a day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's take a, a quick break from all the business talk. Let's have a little fun with what I call rapid fire Q and a don't overthink this. Are you one of those kind of people like me that just overthinks things? Or do you just do a little bit of both? It'll depend on the question. Okay. What is Nancy? What's your favorite movie of all time? Out of Africa. What's your favorite book? That changes every week almost, depending on what I've read. <laughs> what you, do you remember what you read last? Grit. Pie, cake, or cobbler? Oh, cake. Football, basketball, baseball, or hockey? Football, Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, they had a great season, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah, I think <laughs> next year is going to be the year. Boy, can you imagine? Kansas City would go crazy if they go to the Super Bowl. It would be great. Yes, I went to the last playoff game, and it was insanity. And you, and you didn't freeze to death? You know, actually, it wasn't that cold during the game, but once you left the stadium and were walking back to the car was when I said, holy moly, it is <laughs> <laughs> it is cold. All right, last question in our rapid-fire Q&A, Nancy. You are at a karaoke bar. And you have to sing a song. Do you have a go-to song that you would sing? I don't sing, so it would be the shortest possible song because no one wants to hear me sing either. We have that in common. Texas is growing tremendously. Our population growth is attracting a lot of retailers. What advice uh, do you have for other retailers that are considering entering the Texas market? You know, retail as an industry is tough at the moment because there's so much change from brick and mortar to online distribution channels and, you know, how you deliver the goods. So Mm -hmm. I guess the best advice I would give someone is be flexible because that whole world is changing on a regular basis these days. You mentioned the, the, the change from brick and mortar to the, to the online world. How much, of your company's attention in the last few years has been on making your online presence huge? It's not just making your online presence huge. What we say is she wants what she wants when she wants it. Right. And so I think we would be the same as other retailers. You see that you can maximize your revenue stream by having a combination of brick and mortar and an online presence. So she wants to come into the store, but if you don't have what she wants there, she be, expects to be able to order it right there and have it delivered to her house. Mm-hmm. So you really need to offer her all of the choices and let her or him, I shouldn't just say her, let her or him decide how they want to receive their goods. You, know, you mentioned, you said her several times. I'm curious, you know, the number one rule is know your audience. Who is your yes. who is your audience, Nancy? 
So we focus on 35 and above, and okay. we do that for a couple of reasons. One is we can't make a $19 shoe. That's not our forte. So we think often when you're in your late teens, you're in college, you're just out of college, you often, you're, you know, your feet don't hurt yet. You may not be standing on them all day, or you're just still at the point where you could wear be on a piece of cardboard and you're still going to be okay. So we focus on 35 and above because we are also not a fashion house. We found a nice intersection of fashion and comfort, but we think you start to appreciate that probably over the age of 30 more than a 21-year-old does. We tend to make classic styles, so we're not on the front edge edge of fashion. But most of the people who have found their way to SAS either work on their feet, they walk a lot, um, they want to buy a shoe that they're not going to toss in the trash can in three months. And so what we have found is 35 and above is really the nice place for us to be. Clearly, we have some people younger than that 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 purchase our shoes, but that's where our focus is. You know, Nancy, one of the things when I talk to different CEOs, the one thing that always comes up is the battle for talent, and finding the right people. Is it the same for you in the manufacturing world? And and how are you handling finding good talent? It is. Um, you know, one of the challenges we face is there's not a lot of shoemaking in South Texas. So when we bring someone into the factory, we really feel like they're not fully trained for six months. So we start from a position of assuming that we will have to fully train every person that comes through our door that's going to be on the production line. And so we we have built our manufacturing team to allow for that training. Um, we also use a series of backups, backup supervisors to make sure that they have plenty of help while they're in training. And so our focus becomes more about retaining someone Mm -hmm. because obviously if we've trained you for six months, the last thing we want to see is for you to walk out the door. That's a big investment. Do you have an idea of how long people stay with you? So our average tenure in the factory, I believe is right around 15 years. So I have a little funny story to tell you about that. So when Terry and Lou, our founders started SAS, we they had 13 original employees, of which they were two. No original employee ever left SAS to go to work anywhere else. Several have passed away. <laughs> a few have retired, and we have four who still work here. That's incredible. It is. I, they did a tremendous job. Well, you're do- it sounds like you're doing a good job if your average tenure uh, is, is 15 years. That's incredible. And how long have you been with SAS Shoes? So I've been CEO since March of 2012. I actually worked here from 86 to 92. I left and worked um, mostly in technology in the 20 years that I was gone and then returned in March of 2012 to lead the company. You know something that's interesting that when we were talking about your people ordering shoes online, when... When online shopping became such a big deal, I went through things in my head of things that people will never buy online. And one of them, personally, just me, was I thought I would never buy a pair of shoes online because I want to try them on. I want to make sure they feel good. But that's changed for me. I now have no problem ordering shoes online. You know, I think all of us are buying things online that we really couldn't envision 20 years ago, certainly maybe not even 10 years ago. I think the biggest challenge in ordering shoes online is still the sizing. Mm -hmm. And no one has quite figured out, and I know that we worked on it for over a year and don't have it figured out, some type of app by which you can measure your feet and have a better better sense of what size you should order online. Mm -hmm. Um, The person who figures that out, I think there's a race for someone to figure that out (laughs) first. Um, (laughs) Yeah, But it it is a challenge because I think, you know, sizing, especially in our case, we make 88 sizes and widths for women and 116 for men. Many shoe companies have gone to what's called Juro sizing, which is mediums, maybe medium and wides only. They may only do whole sizes rather than whole and half. And they're kind of forcing people into 
a small group of sizes that aren't really their correct fit, but it's, it's adequate for people's needs. We think that's fundamentally unfair and will not give you the most comfort. So why everyone else is contracting on sizes, we're actually expanding. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is a challenge for us to find a tool for people to measure online. Well, Nancy, we appreciate you very much uh, in taking the time to visit with us on the CEO Insider brought to you by Y Texas and uh, wish you nothing but more success, it sounds like. It sounds like things are going very, very well. Well, come take a tour. I think I will, and I think I'm going to bring my daughter. And I'm going to tell the person that uh, is giving the tour that you and I are friends. You should. Make (laughs) sure you tell them that and come by and say hello. I will, Nancy. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.